you know, we've picked up 70 to 100 grand in sales just from a couple of phone calls to people after we've launched a brand new business and only got 10 customers in it. Do you want to impact the world and still turn a profit? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Growth Everywhere. This is the show where you'll find real conversations with real entrepreneurs. They'll share everything from their biggest struggle to the exact strategies they use on a daily basis. So if you're ready for a value-packed interview, listen on. Here's your host, Eric Sue. How many of you have experienced making a bad hire or had bad hires on your team? I personally lost over $840,000 on just one bad hire alone. So that's why I'm doing a free class called the five secrets to avoiding bad hires that can cost you $50,000 plus each. All you need to do is to text bad hire, spell it out, B-A-D-H-I-R-E to 33444. That's double three, triple four, and you'll be registered. I'll see you there. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Growth Everywhere, where we interview entrepreneurs and bring you business and personal growth tips. Today, we're talking to Steven Essa, who is CEO of the X10 Effect and also known as the Webinar Guy. He's a world traveler and has gone around the world in the last year and picked up 25 people and helped them go from $2,000 all the way up to $22,000 in, in varying uh, results. So, Steven, how are you doing today? Excellent, Eric. Thanks for having me on, mate. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how it led up to today and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, mate. I, I basically started out when I left high school. I failed school. I went to um, uh, the music business, basically, where uh, where I was going to make it in a death metal band and uh, uh, me and some guys basically uh, started you know, put, taking it very seriously and touring around Australia and uh, we click, quickly sort of uh, became uh, pretty popular in our community. So, you know, the big dream was to in, travel internationally and tour internationally and play with big bands like Slayer and Metallica and Slipknot and all those heavy bands and um, we went to America in 2002 and they said, you've come at the worst time because the music business was collapsing and uh, it was devastating. You know, 13 years in the music business working very hard, three nights a week, four nights a week rehearsal plus working in a day job, promoting merchandise, all the stuff, all the marketing you have to do in a band, pushing yourself and hustling and uh, it all came to nothing in the end. So I, I basically was sitting there quite frustrated, a little depressed, sitting in my little one-bedroom apartment in LA and I thought, I'm going back to Australia, I'm going to build a business and I'm going to invest in real estate, I'm going to get rich and then I'm never going to have to uh, worry about you know making it in the music business. I can just play guitar in front of the mirror as all day long uh, in my underwear and have a great time, right? <laughs> so uh, so uh, that's what I did. I went back to Australia, I was broke, I owed my sister $30,000 which I'd borrowed to, to survive in America and all of that. So I, uh, I looked at different business models. I tried to build a website that didn't work. I tried, um, you know, network marketing that didn't work. I tried, um, you know, different, uh, you know, just building like uh, sales pages and creating products, and I couldn't seem to get anything working. And uh, until I went to a seminar in 2008. I basically realized, hey, why am I trying to figure this out myself? Someone has already figured it out. I may as well just go and learn from them. So. I learned from a guy uh, about internet marketing at a seminar. Uh, his name was Brett McFall, and uh, that changed my life. I went straight to my boss's business. I started working in, in, a, in a real estate investment company. I went straight to his business and started applying what I was learning at the seminar to, to his business. And uh, we quickly generated like $106,000 in sales using some of the techniques uh, on, on his existing business. And then I realized, hey, I could probably do this for myself. So I quit my job, and six months later, I generated uh, my first web webinar and uh, with only 15 people on the call, I made uh, $594 in sales. Uh, two people out of 15 signed up for a course which I hadn't even created yet um, and I thought, wow, if I could do this once a, once a week or whatever, this would be really cool. So I kind of found webinars to be a really easy way to sort of market and promote products and as well as build relationships with people. I started like a, my first podcast show which wasn't on iTunes at the time but it was just basically a weekly show that I ran. I, instead of doing it as a recorded podcast, I basically did it live and I would answer questions from people and um, you know just build that relationship and then I would promote my other product to them as well. So I made four grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, 90 grand from some automated webinars and recently a business partner of mine uh, in a business that, that I built with him did $120,000 in sales with only 13 people on the webinar and that's another strategy I do now which is I, I now 
mainly facilitate webinars for for companies which I own 50% of and I help the experts to sell and speak and all of that and I'm more behind the scenes and that's how I currently have uh, you know five companies doing anything from 5 to 50 grand a month Got it. So you work with these quote unquote, let's just call them gurus, even though I hate the word. So you work with these gurus that have a following already. And all you need to do is pretty much turn on the jets with what you know already. And then boom, they're off to the races. Yeah, the ones I've actually started with Eric weren't gurus when we started out. Like they were what they what they did have was they had a passion. They had a level of expertise that was really really good. They loved working with customers, but they didn't have that marketing side. And they're the ones that are going to really give you 50% because they just want to do what they do best. You know, many practitioners, healers, um, you know, specialist coaches, trainers, experts, they love doing what they do. They don't want to learn internet marketing. They don't want to know how to put together a webinar or how to automate it and all of that. They're happy to give you 50% just to do that for them and you know I've had many clients in the beginning how I got the idea was many clients like I helped one vet make over $300,000 from webinars in his first 12 months he sold his vet practice and started doing webinars full time and he sent me an email saying thank you so much webinars are now my bread and butter I had airline pilots teaching training students and they automated they made over 450,000 pounds in a couple of webinars so I, I asked them after they made the money after studying my course I said hey if someone would have done this for you, would you have given them 50%? They said, absolutely. If, if, if we didn't have to worry about building this internet marketing stuff, we would have gladly given up 50% for someone else to do all of this and we just turn up and talk. So that triggered the idea for me to say, wow, next time I meet someone who's really hungry but doesn't have the marketing side, doesn't want to learn that marketing side, just wants to speak and deliver and work with people and help people, I'm going to I'm gonna you know see if they want to do a 50-50 company with me and that's what I've done. Got it. Okay. And how do, you know, how do revenues look for your company today? Uh, we generated uh, last financial year. Our financial year finishes uh, in uh, the end of June 30 every year. So uh, we start our financial year July 1st. Last financial year, we did 2.2 million in sales. Wow, awesome, cool, man. And this is just it, uh, webinars that are, are, the, are the bread and butter, huh? So that, that's interesting. I mean, just for the audience to know, I mean, you know, in, in the tech space, you don't see a lot of people talking about webinars too much. You know, people are very head down. Uh, you know, it's B two B sales, or you know, they're they're driving a lot of traffic and they're you know optimizing conversion rates. But you don't see a lot of webinars happening too much. You know, people do do it. So, I mean, what kind of tools do you recommend for for people that are starting out with webinars? Yeah, I think what you need to the first thing I do, you know, before I start any, I never start a, a business with a uh, with a website. I never ever do that. I always start with a with a webinar, sixty minute webinar, because at the end of the day, if you can't speak to someone for sixty minutes and then convince them to buy a product or service or take the next step, book a consultation or you know, test out your offer, test out your software on a 30-day trial or whatever. If you can't convince them after 60 minutes talking to them about the features, the benefits, the uh, you know, your, your, what you know and what led you to uh, to, to building this software or, or doing this business, if you can't convince them after that, then you got no chance on a web page with just text. You know, so always looking at okay, let's put together a 60-minute webinar presentation and let's deliver some great value, and then let's tell them about our product or service at the end. So instead of selling on the webinar, we actually want to educate people, uh, you know, as to what led us to where we are and how they could do the same. You know, so if someone's selling a software, you could do a demonstration. So before you do a demonstration, you talk a little bit about the manual process of what you used to do, for example, right? So I used to have to, you know, I created a webinar software, right? It's called Webinator. So I, when I do a webinar for that, I say, like, you know, look, guys, you know, webinars are fantastic because, you know, you can generate 10 times more sales than a website. You can do this and this and this. Here's some of my credibility. Here's some of the people I've helped. This guy made a million dollars. This guy made a million dollars. This guy, you know, these people have million dollar businesses thanks to my webinar strategy. Uh, but you know what the problem was? That we had to wake up at four o'clock in the morning to do webinars for the UK, or we had to, you know, uh, you know, do webinars for the US at 11 a.m. And you know, many people, you know, don't like doing multiple webinars in a day. So you got to be there. It's not automated. It's not leveraged. So what I did was I, I got a developer together and I created this amazing software which automates your webinars for you. Let me show you how it works. You know, so I state the problem first. Identify the target audience, identify the needs, and then you know really give them the solution. Uh, that's what I do in in the webinar. Now, if if I don't have a software to sell, then we're looking at just creating a, a sequence of steps that people need to go through in order to be successful and then you offer them a product or a service at the end. Now, you don't have to do a big hard sell. There's lots of three different ways to sell on a webinar that I teach people. The soft sell, the medium sell, or the hard sell. And 
any one of those at the end of 60 minutes is going to yield some conversion because people who stick around for 60 minutes definitely are interested. They're just looking for what's the next step and 10% of people want to go further faster. Got it. Okay. So, you know, what I've heard with, with some quote unquote webinar pros and these people are doing, you know, a couple million, they're pretty successful as well. And, and what they do is they say in, during webinars, they never really want to teach much. It's like, yeah, you know, teach a few points, but don't really give them much. And then because if you give them something to do, then they're going to go out and do it instead. And then they're not going to pay attention to the webinar. I mean, so, I mean, when you're doing these webinars, you know, how much teaching are you actually doing? Are you providing a lot of value or are you just giving them just a little bit just to get them interested? Yeah, I totally disagree with that theory, Eric, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Um, you Basically, what you're doing, you're burning people who are not going to come to your future webinars, right? And we all know in business that we don't make sales every time the first time. And if you're in the business to make sales the first time every time, then yeah, go ahead and, and, and just you know try and create a, a pitch that's you know with no content or very little content and then, and then pitch people. But you'll struggle to get them back to, uh, to another webinar because they'll see that you're not adding much value, okay? But what you do want to do is have a balance of information. Okay? Okay, so what I try to do is I put together a, a killer. The ten minute first ten minutes, you want to put together a killer introduction, which is you know stating what's the big benefit for them, what's the marketing hook, what's the title of your webinar. It could be like my latest one is discover how to make one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in sixty minutes every week thanks to webinars, right? So that tells them clearly it's a big promise. Here's what it is, and I get to the point as quickly as I can when I start the webinar. Then I want to relate to them. I want to find out who's on the webinar and tell them this webinar's for you if you're a um, if you're an author and you're looking to leverage your $30 product into a $300 webinar series, I'm going to show you how to create that and, and start making more revenue for yourself. You know, so you're making money as an author and you can do you know writing full time. Um, you know, if you're a speaker and you're sick of traveling around the world and you want to you know leverage and you don't want to travel anymore, but you still want to make money and you want to automate yourself as well. I'm going to show you how to use webinars to do that. And if you're like a business op opportunity seeker and you uh, you know you, you haven't made money yet, I'm going to show you how you can use other people's knowledge to make money. If you're a if you're a software developer and you want to sell your software, then this is a great way you can use JV webinars. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to try to touch on all the different verticals that could be on the webinar with me, all the different demographics, the target audiences that could be there. I want them to all say at one point on the slide, "Oh, that's me." You know, um, yeah, that's what I want to do. Now I'm connected with them and then I want to build up some proof. So I say uh, credibility. So I say, look what I did for this guy. Look what I did for this guy. He's a pilot. He's a vet. He's a doctor. He's a, uh, a coach. He's, you know, here's what I did, what my, what my wife did before we even met. Here's what I've done. And I build up lots of proof, okay, at the beginning to, to show them, hey, here's why you should listen to me because look what I've done here. Look, I've even traveled around the world, 25 cities around the world, picked people, made two to $22,000 from the audience. So I'm giving lots of proof. You have to be able to back up what you say that you're doing. So testimonials, proof, uh, and if you know, it can be your own testimonial too. You can have your own case study. If you've done something like if you've lost weight, you know, you've got a diet program. You say you lost 20 20 pounds in you know 12 weeks or whatever. Then you say, look, this is me before, this is me after, because nothing sells like proof on a webinar. And people go, ah, oh, wow. Well, this guy knows what he's talking about, or this girl knows what she's talking about. And then we want to, you know, if we don't have that, we want to show some stats to back up what we say. So I use a bit of both. I say, look, my statistics show that uh, you know one out of every 100 visitors on a website will buy, one out of every 10 visitors on a, uh, on a webinar will buy. So webinars produce 10 times more sales than than websites. So I'm trying to convince them like a, like, a, like a lawyer in a closing argument in a case, trying to convince the jury that you need to understand how powerful this is and why you should listen to me and why I can teach you how to do this in the first 10 minutes. Then you get into the steps and this is where the selling is done in the content. So people make up their own mind based on the information that you give them on the webinar and what I always, always tell people is just break up your, your, your content into three or five steps. And that way, you've got some structure, and you're teaching that person who's watching that you have structure. So they're going, "Oh, okay, wow. Well, this 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 makes sense. Like step number one is that. Step number two is that. Step number three is that. And that should go for about 40 minutes. And what you want to have on every single step is you want to have again proof. You want to back up what you're saying. You want to have some stats on what you're saying, or one of one of those two. You want to tell a story, okay, on on a step, okay. And what you want to tell them is what to do and a little bit of how 
how to do it, but not too much because you don't want to turn it into a lecture. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let's say we were doing a webinar on podcasting, right? So step number one was, you know, uh, set up your website for a podcast website. So you wouldn't want to say, let's go to GoDaddy right now and, and buy a domain. That's what you need to do. So click here, go there, sign up with GoDaddy. Now, when you sign up with GoDaddy, just avoid the uh, the cross sells and the upsells they're trying to do. You don't need those. And then you got your go your account. Now you need to get the hosting. Now here's how you link the hosting with that. And then here's you know you got to get this plugin. It's called Blueberry. Let me show you how to. You wouldn't. Have 40, you couldn't do it in 40 minutes. Does that make sense, Eric? Totally makes sense. So you can't go too deep anyway, but you don't want to hold back and you don't want to have the audience feeling like you're holding back. You want to be have them feeling like you are trying to cram everything in as much as possible into that 40 minutes so you're trying to give them massive value because people are smart these days. You know, People, buyers, buyers know. They're, they're being pitched to every single day of the week. They're becoming savvy. They've heard all the tricks. So if they sense for one second that you're holding back or you're, you just want them to buy the package or this is another one of those webinars that, you know, there's, there's a little bit of content, they tease me and then they, they pitch to me, you're just going to look like everyone else. What you want to aim to do is over deliver, give them all the tips, say, look guys, obviously, you know, if you want to buy a domain name, I, I'm not going to show you here because it's very easy, go to godaddy.com and then you, you buy the hosting from there, the deluxe plan is the best plan that I get. Then what you need is a plugin, all right? You need to use WordPress and you need a plugin, it's called Blueberry and that's going to link you to iTunes. Have a programmer do that for you. Go to Fiverr, go to, uh, give them some resources where they can go. Find someone on Odesk and say WordPress specialist, look for it. So they're sitting there and that what you want them to be doing, Eric, is taking lots of notes. You want them to be going, oh, this is good, oh, wow, oh, that's excellent, oh, good, good. You want them to be engaged and doing that. Otherwise, they're probably sitting on Facebook, they're, they're, they're surfing the internet, they're thinking, oh no, this guy's not going to give me anything. You want to be giving them as much as you can. Tell a story. Hey guys, I, uh, I, I set this up for a client recently in the um, in the weight loss market. Have a look at this podcast example. Bang, look at that template that my guy created for me and you know, I've got a guy that I use, I pay him four grand a month, he's really good but you know, guys, you can find them on Odesk and you can, you know, let them know that you've got a really, really good guy because you're planting a seat. If you're going to sell them a website later, you're going to say, "Look at what my guy did, and he's four grand a month. He's really expensive." But you guys can go and find your own. But you know, this is what you're looking for. This is the sort of quality you're after. So we're still planting a seed that you know our our guy's really good for later on if we're selling uh, that that done for you service for them, selling them a website or a course and giving access to our guy, we've showed them and planted the seed early on. That's totally okay but as long as we're not robbing them because they're investing their time, we have to deliver great information, tell a story, hook them in, tell a stat, tell, a, um, you know, tell them what resources they should be using, tell them what to do and a little bit of how to do it but mainly what to do. You don't want to turn it into a full lecture and do that on every step and go for 40 minutes and then you've got 10 minutes left at the end to pitch your product or your your service and there's a few ways to do that. I love it. Now, do you have any replays or anything that we can share in the notes afterwards, maybe even a PDF so people know exactly how they should structure it? I do, absolutely. Yeah, I've got a, uh, a webinar that I run and I follow the exact same formula except it's a 90-minute webinar so the intro is 15 minutes, the content is 60, uh, 60 minutes and the outro is 15 minutes. If you follow that, you, you, you watch to a T, I'm following my own script exactly to the letter and that's available at steveesser.com. Perfect, great. I think we'll we'll link that up, uh, you know, in the, in the post itself. But this will be awesome. Um, okay, so you know, you you talked about the conversion rates for for webinars. You know, you said that you indicated that they're at ten percent, right? So yeah. you know, what can you talk about the stats around live webinars first, and then can you share some stats around the automated webinars that you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Look, whenever we do a new product or a new service, we always launch it live. You know, live webinars are going to get you the best conversion because people feel like you know, people feel like you're there. It, it's just like it's got a better energy to it a live webinar. Uh, you know, but that being said, we've done webinars where we've made you know five percent conversion on the webinar, and then you know we've done ten or twelve percent on the replay. You know, one example comes to mind. We did five grand. Had a hundred people on the webinar with my business partner when we launched him in two thousand. 2012, five you know five sales out of a hundred people at a thousand dollars, and then sixteen sales at sixteen grand from the replay, so twenty one grand in total. So it just depends on the way you, that you market it. But at the end of the day, I think live webinars are better. Uh, run two live webinars a day instead of just one. So what you do is you run it say at midday, okay, twelve o'clock your time, and then you run another one at eight p.m. And when people register, you give them the option to join. 
you, uh, whichever one they want to, and uh, and then you run both of them, and you pick the one that converted the best, and you use that as a replay. That's what we do now. And uh, just about uh, I don't know about six weeks ago, I did a JV webinar with uh, with a guy that makes me a lot of money, and uh, we did over fifty seven grand in sales, and uh, a lot of most of those sales came from the replay. But what I find is on a live webinar, more committed people turn up. They're committed. They've made that commitment. They've registered and they've showed up. That makes them the most highly targeted person for your business at that point they are absolutely hot to trot so you know they're the best ones and they're the ones who made time so you know the everyone else can catch a replay uh, conversions usually won't be as good but over the long term if you're promoting it and more people watch the replay you'll probably get more sales got it okay so I'm gonna give you a real life example right now okay so you know, I, I launched my product. It's around, you know, how, how to hire A players, right? You know, conversion rate was about 5%, um, you know, a couple of weeks back. The, the big issue right now is that the, you know, even though there's an email list and all that, you know, we're driving traffic through Facebook. We're not getting, we're not, we're, for, for whatever reason, we're not able to drive traffic through Facebook. And I have to assume that you're promoting heavily through Facebook. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. We promote through Facebook too, yeah. Got it. So what would you do around this when somebody has a product they just launched, you know, it's, there's some conversion around it, but they're having trouble getting traffic. What should what should that person do in this situation? Look, the easiest way, and this, this is a question I get all the time, once we've put the webinar together, how do we get people there? The easiest way to get targeted traffic that's going to be buying traffic because look, we can have people on a webinar, Eric, that let's say you have 100 people on your webinar that, that basically came from Facebook ads, right? They've never met you before and they come straight to your webinar, right? And even if you nurture them a little bit over a few weeks and send this email and the seven touches and all that crap that people talk about, <laughs> right? You know, even if you do that, those 100 people are never ever in a million years going to convert as powerfully as if you said to me, Steve, mail this webinar to your database for me and get people to a webinar. And I personally email my database and go, hey guys, if you want to know how to build a million dollar business, you need A-grade players. And I just met this guy, Eric. He's amazing. He's got a system for getting A-grade players in your business. And uh, check out this webinar. I've convinced him to put it together or he's got this amazing webinar. Check it out. And if I promote that to my database and I get you 100 people there, okay, because they're the target audience that you're after, you are going to convert 10% plus on that webinar. Okay, if you don't convert 10% or more, something wrong with my database. I don't have a good relationship with them. Okay, so you know, targeted traffic from someone else's database, a joint venture partner, is the fastest and easiest and cheapest way that you will make money. Because if you try and make money on a front end offer on Facebook ads, you'll blow your budget. You'll spend 100% of your money before you even make one sale, right? You know, whereas you know, then you make money on the back end products, your 5Ks and your 10K boot camps and whatever else that you're running. You know, so you know, to do it this way, you're giving up 50% on average to a JV partner for for them to promote you, but you're not paying if you don't make money. Whereas Facebook ads, you're going to be paying if you don't make money. So what's really smart is to find people who have a database already who would appeal to your target uh, product and you convince them, say, hey, Steve, hey, John, promote this for me. It's a great webinar. It's packed full of great content. Your audience is going to love it and there's a great offer at the end. You're going to get 50% as well. Another great reason why delivering content is very important because if you're going to mail to my database, if I'm going to mail my database for anyone, I want to know that that webinar has got great content in it. So even if my audience doesn't buy, they're still going, wow, thank you, Steve, for putting on Eric. He was amazing. Even though I'm not ready to buy it now, I've, I, I know where to go when I'm ready and I got some amazing tips there. Thank you so much. And they'll come to my next webinar. That's what I'm looking for because I'm looking for stuff to promote all the time. So you want to find three or four or five guys like me that have databases over 30,000 people that can get you a lot of people registered that on a webinar, those guys can make you rich. You know, three or four JV partners when I started made me absolutely wealthy, made my first million dollars from uh, JV partners. I didn't focus on any other traffic source because someone else has already built the database. Let's leverage that. And if you can't find someone else to uh, to promote for you because you say, oh, this big guy, he, he's not answering my email. Well, you got to follow up. You got to, you know, sometimes it's taken me three years to get a JV with a guy that I'm doing right now and he's going to take me on tour around a Australia, we could do a $2 million in sales in two weeks. But that relationship, I've been nurturing for three years now. So, you know, it's, it's worth building. And if they won't promote you, offer them money up front. 
if you know that your webinar converts at 5% or 10% with, with Facebook traffic, then it's going to convert a lot more with someone's database. So say to them, Steve, hey, I'll give you five grand if you promote this to your, to your list. Uh, how many people do you have on your list? Or I'll give you $1,000 and that's called solo ads. And there's lots of different websites now that have solo ads um, you know, in the business opportunity market and different areas that you can actually go and pay them and they mail their database for you. That's way better than, uh, than doing cold traffic from Facebook ads if they have a relationship with their database. You have to make sure. Join their database first. Make sure they're sending regular emails. See what they're offering. See what, uh, what their open rates are. Ask them and then pay them money to promote for you and uh, that's powerful. Also, websites like blogs do this as well. You know, uh, what my wife has a social media management company called Social Media Worldwide and basically what she did, she went to these mummy blogs. Mums who are trying to stay at home and make money, she went to those blogs and, and paid them like three grand, drove traffic to a, a registration page for a webinar, got a list of about three or four hundred people, uh, you know, then promoted her two ninety seven a month product. You know, she did about ten sales. So it's like three grand recurring from a uh, from a spend from a, a spend on a on a solo ad. Got it. You know, for solo ads, I, I've heard I hear about internet marketers talking about safe swaps all the time. You know, do you have, are you familiar with that? And do you, what's your take on it? Safe swaps is pretty shit, excuse the French, because <laughs> there's a lot of guys on there who are really savvy, uh, but there are there are always some good guys on there as well. So just be careful. You've got to check to make sure that the traffic is uh, – that the leads are genuine, okay? So you want to basically, uh, you know, uh, check the reviews of the people, but even they can be tainted sometimes. Uh, check the reviews and test them out. What's good about solo uh, safe swaps is that it's only $50 for like 100 clicks, so you can test it out. So if, you, if you're in the IMC, space you can definitely test it out but a lot of those leads have been burnt as well so you know they've been tossed around and handed around as well my friend just came out with a new uh, uh, a new uh, website which basically does solo ads and uh, I know his database is really good his name is Brian Coz and uh, Sean Casey as well they're top internet marketers and those guys um, came up with a, a really really cool uh, a really really cool uh, site I'm, I'm just looking for the name of it now um, I can't seem to find it, but yeah, just basically test out. It's cheap to test out. Uh, you know, spending a little bit of money. If you, you put aside a budget of five grand, test a couple of guys out and uh, and see if they actually convert. Because getting the opt in is 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 the first step, but actually seeing if they convert, following it through. And what I noticed is even a lot of big internet marketers, uh, Eric, they don't even track all the way through. They don't track each traffic source. So if you are sending solo ads to each different provider, make sure that you're tracking all the way through. Like I use Infusionsoft. Which is, you know, it's not the best system in the world, but it's all in one, and it's easy for a for a uh, failed student and a non techie like me to use. And I can track every single person all the way through to if they buy or not, you know, because it drops an affiliate link on them for every link that I, uh, every referral that uh, that. Um uh, that they click on. So we know exactly who they came from and uh, when they buy and when they don't buy. So that's really the most important thing is how much money you're going to make back. So you want to track that process all the way through and you need a really good tracking system to do that. Got it. Now just jumping into pricing for a second. So the 5% conversion that I got was at a $197 price point and I've been testing 497 and 997 The only issue is each webinar only had about 10 to 15 attendees. So do you think that sample size is too small and or, and do you think I should continue testing pricing or do you think I should just continue to stick with the 5% conversion rate? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question I get all the time. Look, I'd be looking for a little bit more than uh, a little bit more than um uh, five percent, uh, or that fifteen people, and and five percent as well. So what I would be looking to do, Eric, for your product is there's not really much difference between one ninety seven and two ninety seven. What I've found from uh, research that I've done and testing that we've done with many students and myself uh, is basically that. People will spend up to two hundred and ninety-seven dollars without any hesitation. Okay, that's the first price point that I'm, I'm testing. Usually for a course, a uh, series of eight or ten modules, maybe throw in there a couple of coaching sessions, really just so that you can basically call each customer and find out why they're buying. Because I always introduce a new product with a, with coaching calls. Because number one, I want the audience who's buying to have that that security to know that hey, I'm backing up this product and I'm going to call you right. But after the first hundred customers, I'm going to check. You know, I'm going to put the price up, or I'm going to reevaluate the program, or I'm going to add more value to it to try and figure out to get it to that next bracket, which is four hundred ninety-seven dollars. So if you're converting more than ten percent at two ninety-seven, you're ready to go to four ninety-seven because 
that's the next bracket. And what I've found, most people don't have more than $500 at any given time in their bank account. So that $497 price point is the second price point that I'm going to test. But sometimes, you know, if I'm, I'm doing a property webinar or a stock market webinar, I'll test $497 or $997 straight away because you're looking at what else is available on the market. Because even at, at the close of your webinar, what you want to do before you make the final offer you basically go through your whole course and you tell them what they're going to get and before you pitch the price you say can you do this another way yeah you could go and buy John Johnny B's course on shows you how to do what I'm showing you how to do plus I'm, I'm actually going to you know do some coaching sessions with you uh, you're going to you know you're not going to get that with his course but you're going to get it with mine and his one sells for $997 or you could go and study this share trading program which sells for 5000 but they only show you how to you know buy shares at a discount they don't show you how to protect yourself they don't Show you how to put put uh, you know insurance on your shares and stuff like that. So you want to show the competitors, okay, and what they're offering and why yours is still superior, even if it is just the price. Okay, so you're doing it, justifying the price drop, justifying the discount, and showing why yours is absolutely amazing, uh, and uh, and and doing that as well can really really help. So you know, 497 is the next price. If you're still doing 10% at 497, then you want to be uh, moving it up to 997 is the next bracket. You know, recently I had a student came to me and she said, Steve, you know, we converted at 297, so we put it to 497. We still converted at 15% for 497. I want to put it to 697. Now, I know she's moving out of the bracket of people that have $500 at that point. So I said to her, look, if you go from 497 to 697, you, you're, you're just going to lose people who were going to buy for 497 but not going to be able to afford any more than that. You're just going to lose them and you're moving into the next bracket of people who have $1,000 to spend. And once they've already made up their mind and they're watching you and they've seen you, and now they've made up their mind in the content section because they've gone, wow, look at Eric. Wow, wow, this Eric guy, man, he, if he can get me one or two A-grade players, man, I can grow my business to 2 or $3 million, right? So they're sitting there and they know they want to work with you from the content because you've blown, you're blowing them away, right? And they're sitting there going, man, I'd love to have this Eric guy on my side. And then when you go into your product at the end, now they're going, oh man, I have to, wow, I get to talk to him on the phone, wow, that's awesome. And now they've already made up their mind that they're in, now they just have to be able to afford what they've got. All right, or they have to, you know, be able to, you know, see themselves asking their wife to say, "Darling, one more program. I'm just going to buy one more program. Eric's program is the only one. That's it. He's going to show me how to get A grade players. That's all." So he's in in their mind while you're closing, while you're selling. They're telling themselves a story. They're like, "Wow, they're going, this is going to have this, and how am I going to sell it to my wife and whatever?" And they're justifying, right? So if you're at 497, they're like, "Oh wow, she won't even notice on the credit card. Bang, I'm in." Right, uh, or I've got that, or and I can. I'm not going to, you know. Next week I'll make up the rent. Next week it's not a big deal, <laughs> you know. Whereas, whereas when you jump to 997, that's a different group of buyers that are buying at that point there, right? So a different group of buyers that that are jumping in. So what I said to her is, let's just take it from 497 to 997, and she still did 10% at 997 because when you when you put the price up to 697. Okay, from 497, you run the risk. If if she did 10% at 497, right, and we had say 100 people there, we got five grand in sales, right, at at 497. Well, if she only does six or seven percent at 697, she's not going to make the same amount of money, right? And I would rather more customers in the door than I would rather a higher price because I know one out of every 10 customers who buys our 297 or 497 program, they're going to buy our five or 10 grand program, which is our profit maker product, right? Where we make real profit in the company. You know, I've done this many, many times, Eric, and every single time we have 10 customers, I tell my business partner, call up those 10 customers, right? And, and, and offer them a done for you service or a hand holding one on one coaching for 12 months for 10 grand or 20 grand. You know, we've picked up 70 to 100 grand in sales just from a couple of phone calls to people after we've launched a brand new business and only got 10 customers in it. You know, it's just amazing how many people want more hand holding, want it done for them, and they're happy to pay a premium for it. In fact, a lot of people on your webinar right now that you've sold to that didn't buy. We're probably looking going, uh, 197, I can afford that, but I don't have time to do that. If if Eric would do it for me, if Eric would hire A grade people for me, I'd gladly pay him ten or twenty grand. I'd gladly pay him, you know, uh, you know, a management fee of a thousand dollars a month to 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 you know hire and fire them for me. You know, but they don't have time to watch your course and do that. So by not offering a high end profit maker product, 
then you're, you're missing out on people who like all your information, but they didn't want that pa particular package. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They say, Steve, people aren't buying my course. Well, maybe they didn't want a course. Maybe they want it done for them. And if you offer it, bang, they're going to do it. And I've had this happen so many times where people came and said, I don't have time to do it. Can, can I buy you to do it? And this is how we built my wife's social media management company. She does $297 a month, manages your Twitter or your Facebook account, and uh, and uh, you know she, you know people weren't buying her course, but they gladly they're buying that. The company's now worth 1.7 million dollars because she's got a whole bunch of customers she manages on a monthly fee. Got it. Okay, so let me understand. I mean, my understanding usually is you know you sell them at a you know 297 price point, and then you're upselling them in the back end, right? Are you saying you know in your webinar you're 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 also telling them that you have the 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 done for you course or done for you uh, service available as well? Absolutely. I mean, not at the same time because I've never seen too many good speakers on webinars who can do a dual close. If you confuse people and they're not sure what to buy, they can say no. So it's a much higher risk because a confused mind usually always says no. So, you know, you run the risk if you're offering two things. Okay, you run the risk of having them get confused and not sure what to buy and they make no decision, right? So what I'm suggesting is you put together another webinar, spin the content a little bit, change it a little bit, maybe even put a different marketing hook on it, resend it to your database and offer your 10 or your 20K program at the end and uh, and have it a little bit separate. We did this with a boot camp. We sell a 10 grand boot camp where we have 20 students come in and on the Gold Coast here, they fly in, we fly, I mean, we pay for their flights, accommodation. You know, we spend five days with them, we build their whole business for them. And I offered that on a webinar in December. I did 100K. Uh, 10 people, you know, signed up at, at, at 10K each. People from London flying in and whatever. Thailand, they flew in from Thailand. You know, all of that. So, you know, it, I could have offered them my standard 3K program. Uh, but, you know, they wanted, they wanted, they felt like, you know, they've done all the courses. They now want to have someone sit with them or do it for them or, you know, uh, whatever it is. So either a done for you, a mastermind, a, a boot camp, you know, uh, where, where they get access to you and they just want it done. They just they're happy to pay. They just want it done. So you definitely have customers right now, Eric, that uh, that that would would be buying your higher end package because they don't want to buy another course. You know, I did this with Scott Ruick, a big media buying guy in uh, in San Francisco. He's been in Silicon Valley three years, uh, yeah, thirteen years, sorry, and uh, you know he's basically built you know hundred million dollar companies in in Silicon Valley and all that. And he was struggling to sell a low end product. I said, Scott, what are you doing, man? I said, you are you are like the man. You know, you got all the cred, all the you ran all the media buying campaigns for all the big guys, Frank Kearns and all of those guys in the in the early days. I said, you should be going for the high end customer, not the little guy. And, and we put it up to ten k. The next webinar he did, he did ten sales at ten grand, and he said, Steve, you wouldn't believe it. He goes, the people when I phoned them up to interview them uh, to make sure that I, I approve they get in because you want to, you know, they should make sure, you know, who's giving you 10 grand is, has got some mental stability. You don't want to be dealing with a nightmare if you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. So, you know, he said, Steve, nine out of 10 of those guys, he, he said to me, oh, look, Scott, we don't want to bother you. We're already making 40, 50 grand a month from our house. We just want to call you from time to time to network a little bit because we're bored, you know? Is that okay? And he's like, wow, these are the best customers ever. People who pay you more money are actually the best customers you'll ever want to work with. You know, you can just sack the, everyone else and just work with your best customers. Wow, that's amazing! That 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 the fact that you can sell those ten k programs. I mean, the, the fact that you you mentioned you, know, you guys were able to do one hundred twenty k just off of one webinar. I mean, that shows the potential for everyone um, that's out there. So really, any business. Um, okay, so I want to take a step backwards really quick um, on the JV stuff. So you know, let's say someone's starting out. You know, uh, they're not sure where to look for JVs. You know, what's the best way for them to go and then look for the the right JVs and what type of criteria should they uh, you know really set for these quote unquote uh, potential JVs? That's an awesome question, Eric, and something I've been testing over the past 10 months is exactly what we're doing here in this interview, and that is if you're an expert at something or you've got a product, then you should go and find people who are doing podcasts right now because they're looking for people to interview, right? So what they're doing is you're, you're meeting new people. All right. So if you uh, if you get interviewed by someone and you give great value to their subscribers, they're like, "Wow, thank you so much, dude." And it's like, and and where can people find out more? Like you watch, I I, I didn't pre-organize this with Eric, um, but basically he said to me, uh, he's going to ask me at the end, where can people find out more information? Am I right, Eric? That's correct. Exactly. So at the end of every podcast interview, as a sign of uh, reciprocity, the the person who's interviewing you will say to you, 
where can people find out more information? And what you want to do is you want to sell them on your webinar. You don't sell them a product. You say, guys, I've got this amazing webinar. It teaches you it teaches you how to ha how to hire A-grade players. I give you a formula on there as well as a template and uh, and a demonstration on that. And it's all for free and it's available at my website, blah, 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 dot com. And you give them your website. Now, they, people, they're going to send this podcast that you do out to their database. Now, not every podcaster has a database of 20 or 30,000 people, but when you start doing 10 or 20 of these, at least one out of every 10 will have a big size database. And as you get better on the on the interviews, word spreads. Other people want to interview you. What I did was hired uh, Jessica at Interview Connections, and what they do is they hire, they, they find me people to interview uh, to get interviewed on their show so they might book me three or four times a month on different people's podcasts and uh, and then you know that podcaster says to them hey thank you so much have you got any more people like that you know that that interview was great um, you know and then they get confidence and then they book me on other podcasts and then I'm on all these different podcasts at the end of the podcast people some people go to my webinar they sign up so they're on my database and then a percentage of them buy Right, I've generated over 50 grand in sales just from doing podcast interviews and the amazing people that I've met. I've met people like Eric. I've met other other podcasters with great products, and I tell them, "Hey, you know, I've got a webinar. I can do it. I can do a webinar to your database, and you can do a webinar to my database." So automatically. I've built a relationship with guys like Eric in that way because you know after if I just emailed Eric and said hey promote my webinar and you know I'll promote yours Eric might say yes he might say no because he doesn't know me but now I'm, I've built up a relationship with Eric and I've heard what he does I see that he does a podcast that means he's professional I can listen back to some episodes and go wow this guy knows his stuff and and Eric can approach me and say hey Steve do you mind promoting this webinar for me and and I'll promote your one and we can do some sort of swap okay now even if Eric doesn't have a big database himself and he's just getting started, it doesn't matter to me. I'm still looking for stuff to sell and make money from my database. I'll gladly promote him uh, as long as the webinar fits my list and he gives me 50%. And, and that relationship is built whether you're running podcasts. If you've, if you've done podcasts already and you've interviewed people, you have every right to ask them to promote you because you have let them talk about the thing that they love talking about the most and that's themselves and their, and their business. right? So I feel like I already know every person person who interviews me on a podcast and I'm way more likely to work with them than I am with someone who just sends me an email. So while emailing works, I recommend you go out there, get interviewed, start a podcast, interview people on a podcast, vice versa. Both ways will work for you. We do both but one of those will uh, will work for you definitely. Got it. Now when you're sending out these outreach emails to, to people that you want to do JV partnerships with, you know, just walk us through what would, what would an example email look like? Yeah, totally, dude. Instead of just me uh, coming off the top of my head, I do have a template. Let me dig up the template and I'll give you the exact wording uh, that I use for you guys who are listening so you can actually uh, you know, be confident with it. And I got this template from a, uh, an amazing woman who took a company from 700,000 to 4.3 million uh, revenues in, a, in just a few years. And, uh, and she gave me this template and it's absolutely amazing. It goes something like this. Hi, first name. I hope you are well. I'm a big fan of your work. My name is blah, 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 and I specialize in this area here, a short sentence about what you do. I recently created a webinar titled blah, 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 how to, how to hire an A-grade an a team and grow your business to a million dollars or whatever your title is, and I'm selling my product called Build Your A-grade team mastery program in this webinar. This is converting very well. Here are some statistics and numbers on the webinar. Overall conversion rate is 5% or 10%. The high uh, dollar amount EPCs is this much, so earnings per click on what I sent to my database. The price point is a one-time fee of not $4.97. The payout is fifty, uh, you know, $250 per sale. That's uh, like 50%. The refund rate is less than 2%. Uh, and I would, uh, there's great content in there that your list will really appreciate and really love. And would you be interested in arranging a joint venture webinar to your list? I look forward to hearing from you. Kind regards. Okay? I love it. We're going to have to steal that from you. Oh, totally, dude. Totally. I'll, uh, I'll Skype it to you right now and you can just punch it in your, um, you can punch it into your uh, into onto the site. Um, so the follow up to that. Now most people are not going to answer you, even if you know them, right? Even if you know someone, they're not going to they're going to not going to answer because they're busy. They're busy promoting their own stuff. They're busy working on their own launch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what you want to do 
is follow them up. Okay, with a phone call is the best thing. If you can't, you follow them up with another email about, you know, maybe five days later. You follow them up and you say something like, hey, uh, John, uh, I'm not sure if you received my email below about uh, the webinar. It really is an amazing webinar. Your list is going to love it. Um, you know, I don't want to pester you. I don't want to bother you, but I don't want to take no for an answer because I know how good this is and how much value your list is going to get out of it. So please, get back to me. Uh, let me know when we can do this. It's going to be amazing and I look forward to working with you. All right. So again, they just the email is underneath. If you can get them on the phone, even better. Uh, and uh, and just let them know that you're you know you're being pushy, but you don't want to be uh, you don't want to take no for an answer. If they don't want to do it, you're giving them an out. Say, look, if you don't want to do it, just tell me no, and that's it. I won't bother you ever again. But most guys, most guys, they don't want to tell people no. All right. They don't want to tell people no because they know that you know you could have something great, and uh, and they want to you know they want to they want to help people. Most people, you know, some people are a real. Some people will never give someone new an opportunity, uh, you know, because they've got their own little uh, networks and whatever, and that's okay. You know what I mean? They've got their own business; it's their prerogative. They can run their business how they run their business. But you know, we'll always give someone new a try as long as they've got a webinar that they've at least done. You know, even if they've got small numbers. If I watched a webinar and look at the presentation, I think, well, that's good content, and my list can benefit from that. And you know what? It's a bonus if we make some sales at the end. You know, it's. I'm going to give them a go. You know what I mean? I'm going to fit them in somewhere. And you know, if they're bothering me for six, it might take six months for me to be able to schedule it in. But if they're persistent enough to follow up for six months, they're the kinds of people that I want to work with. You know, I don't want to work with someone that emails me once and then says, "Oh, joint ventures don't work, Steve. I sent ten emails out, and no one got back to me." Well, of course. You know what I mean? If Richard Branson and Donald Trump got rich on the first deal that they did, everyone would be a billionaire now. You know, but that's what it takes. It takes persistence. Create a spreadsheet. Maybe hire a virtual assistant to do some of this for you once you've set it up. Have a template. She can copy and paste. She can find podcasters and stuff like that. You know, For a couple of hundred dollars a month, you can have someone doing it for you. And if you just get one every month, that could be 5, 10, 20K in sales on a webinar to their list plus the database plus the relationship and it's, it goes from there. Love it. Okay, cool, man. Now, awesome. what's one piece of advice you'd give to your 25-year-old self? Get rid of the music business and start looking at internet marketing because <laughs> I think there was dial-up internet when I was about 25 and we had a website and it would take half an hour to load. I would have said to myself, you know, just uh, just, just basically uh, enjoy life more and, um, you know, don't take everything too seriously. Work hard. But you know, find something that is in a in. A, if you want to, if you want to be wealthy, which I wanted to be free, I wanted to be financially free just to do music full time. I didn't care about the channel. You know, I would have just said to myself, find something that makes money, and uh, you know, start investing in real estate younger. Start, uh, you know, start, um, uh, you know, building a business on the internet, looking at this internet stuff, spending more time on that, and while you're still doing your music, you can do both, but have an exit, have a have a backup plan. You know, love it. And what's awesome. one must-read book you'd recommend to everyone? I love The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. It was the first book that I read where I understood the mindsets of different people who make money different ways. So it taught me to look at, you know, when I'm interviewing someone for a position in the company, I know if they're an entrepreneur and they're going to leave in 12 months and they're doing the job just to get information. And I'm okay with that sometimes. But sometimes I'm looking for someone who wants that job security, who it's you know that wants the benefits, that wants to go on holidays, that wants to go home and not think about work and it's not their responsibility. And I need to know who they are. So I learned that from that book there. Plus, I learned about myself shifting from self-employed, doing everything myself to hiring A-grade players, which is why I'm so interested in your webinar, <laughs> Eric, because it's like that transition from going from employee to self-employed mentality, doing everything yourself, struggling to hire people and saying, oh, I better just stay small at 500 grand because I can't find right good good people. Taking that step in the mindset from going from a self-employed to a big business owner uh, like Richard Branson and that that knows that you have to hire the right people around you so that you can leverage and, 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 and make more money. Love it. Cool. And you, you'll get a free copy of it. No worries. Um, last question for you, Stephen. What's the best way for people to find you online? Here you go. 
Ah, oh, they see. I told you, didn't I? See that? <laughs> that pays off, right? Um, if you want to learn more about webinars, and uh, I've got a cool thing called the Medical Center, where I show you how to get other people build webinars for them, and, and you make fifty percent for life of all of their products, all their services for life. I'll show you that. It's called the Medical Center model or Publisher model. Uh, plus, I'll show you. I'll do a live demonstration with someone on my million dollar template and fill it in on that webinar as well. And you'll see someone presenting that and automating that as well. I'll show you how to automate it. All that plus a lot more. Did I sell it enough, Eric? Was that good? That was perfect. Um, <laughs> it's available for free at steveesser.com. And I'm being a little bit a bit, a bit jokey than, than I normally am, but I'm trying to teach you guys that this is what you do on, on a podcast. And, and, it's, and it's a win-win situation no matter what. I love it. Cool, man. Steven, awesome, this has been massively, massively valuable. I think everyone's going to get a ton of value here. So everyone, this is Steven Essa. Steven, thanks again, man. Oh, you're welcome, brother. Thank you, Eric. How many of you have experienced making a bad hire or had bad hires on your team? I personally lost over $840,000 on just one bad hire alone. So that's why I'm doing a free class called the five secrets to avoiding bad hires that can cost you $50,000 plus each. All you need to do is to text bad hire, spell it out, B-A-D-H-I-R-E to 33444. That's double three, triple four, and you'll be registered. I'll see you there. Thanks for listening to this episode of Growth Everywhere. If you loved what you heard, be sure to head back to growtheverywhere.com for today's show notes and a ton of additional resources. But before you go, hit the subscribe button to avoid missing out on next week's value-packed interview. Enjoy the rest of your week and remember to take action and continue growing.